Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today's episode, we're gonna look at the Rec Room Masters two-player setup. This is a DIY kit, and you're probably wondering, Rec Room Masters, I know I've heard of them before. Well, they were probably the best DIY cabinet builder on the market, and they went out of business about two years ago. Well, Carlos over at arcade-one.com, he sells these really awesome multi-cade PCs, probably one of the best curations of games. It's one of the best setups I've ever used. I put it in my beast cabinet. It's a video from a long time ago. Carlos saw an opportunity to buy the rights to Rec Room Masters and continue the legacy. Rec Room Masters was known for top quality DIY kits, and this thing, takes it to the next level. Carlos has taken the vision that Rec Room Masters first created and put his own unique spin on it. And I gotta admit, this thing is pretty awesome. So in this video, we're gonna take a look at this. I'm gonna show you what you can do with it. And I think at the end of this, you're gonna realize this is a really viable option for your game room. So one of the biggest selling points on the Rec Room Masters cabinet is definitely the control panels. They use all premium parts. This is actually the Emulator Plus Edition. So it comes with a couple different options that I really like. It has a spinner on it, really high quality spinner. It has a trackball, but also has a separate four-way controller. So if you're playing games like Pac-Man or Donkey Kong or Burger Time that require it, it's right here for you, which is really cool. Now, the other thing that's really neat about them is Rec Room Masters has always used high quality components and Carlos kept that, but he did upgrade the sticks, I believe, because these were half competitions and he decided to use the IL Euro sticks which I actually prefer. So that's really cool. But keep in mind, IL Euro sticks are eight way. So it's really cool that he slapped in the separate four way for the games that require it. You're gonna get a six button layout. The other really cool thing is you got an awesome navigation menu. This is something new that they incorporated into the control panel. Now this allows you to navigate not only his build, but any other build you choose. So if you wanted to put in coin ops or another PC based build, or even a Raspberry Pi, you could map these buttons however you want. Now, the magic sauce in this thing is actually, it's using a really good encoder board. I'm not gonna open up this one. I have another Rec Room Masters, an older one. I'm gonna actually show you that control panel for reference. So keep in mind, I had modified this slightly to put pinball buttons on it, but so the wiring isn't exactly how I got it. But if you look, this is showing you the IPAC encoder. Now these can run in direct input, X input. So it's really versatile for really anything you wanna do. So I really like the fact that Rec Room has taken the time to really put all this time and effort into the controls. And I do think it differentiates it because some of the other DIY kits out there, it's up to you to do that. So if you want something where you don't have to worry and you're getting really good controls, it makes Rec Room Masters a really good choice. The other thing that's awesome about this thing is it can accommodate a 32 inch display. Now I chose a more expensive premium LG display. Now on the website, he actually recommends a couple of displays. The thing you need to be aware of is where your connections plug in to your monitor can actually be a concern because of how the TV or monitor mounts inside this system. There is a mounting system that it comes with, but you wanna avoid having to modify that to fit your TV or your display. So what he recommends is a couple models where the plugs are in such a position that makes sense for the display. He has sort of a low budget, a mid tier and a premium, the LG being the premium, but it looks awesome. And it's pretty cool to be this close to an arcade cabinet with such a large display like this. It definitely becomes a little bit more immersive. If you have the right build, it will actually maintain the aspect ratio of your retro games, but allows you to play a lot more modern games that may have 16, nine aspect ratios. So when you're looking to buy a solution like this, overall build quality is obviously gonna be a big concern. The quality or thickness of the wood they use is actually the same as an original arcade. So if you look and measure it, you can see it's the same width. So you're gonna get a really beefy and heavy, this thing is heavy, right? So you do need to kind of be aware of where you're building it because it is heavy, but they use real T-molding. Uh, this is the black version of the cabinet. They have custom artwork if you wanna choose that. There's some really cool styles too. Uh, just for the purposes of review, Carlos sent me the version of it without the artwork. But yeah, you're gonna have quality, regular, you know, arcade T-molding, and then it's gonna be the thickness of a standard uh, arcade cabinet. So it, it's definitely not flimsy and it's definitely not gonna be easy to move if you put it somewhere. So just make sure that wherever you're building it is actually where you're probably gonna wanna keep it. Otherwise, you're gonna need a couple people to probably help you move it if for some reason you wanna take it from one room to another. 
Speaking of putting it together, Rec Room Masters has videos to guide you through the process. Keep in mind this is DIY, so you will need some basic skills to put this together. If you've ever put together a piece of IKEA furniture, then I would say you're qualified. I did get tripped up in one section of this build. I would recommend you have someone there to help you. I did it alone and I wouldn't recommend that. Just get a buddy to help and it'll be a lot easier for you. Okay, so you're probably wondering what do I have running in this thing? I have an eight terabyte arcade-one.com build. I'll have a link to the website if you wanna check out some of the builds. It has so many games on it, it's really cool. And you can flash the firmware on the control panel so that it integrates seamlessly with his build. Now the other cool thing about a DIY arcade project is you can do whatever you want with it. So I decided to put an eight inch subwoofer in here and then I put a 2.1 amplifier which has a subwoofer output so I can support all this stuff. But again, that's the beauty of DIY. You can be as crazy as you want with your build. I will say the other thing that's really cool is there's another top shelf area. You could use that for like other builds. Like I'm just using a PC in here. You could have a Raspberry Pi. You could have a PC with Steam. You could do a whole bunch of cool stuff with this. Whatever you really want to have as the brains in here, you can really do that. The other thing is, I didn't show you this, but from the front there's a, there's a hidden panel you can push in and it drops down. And that gives you access to your keyboard or controllers, like if you want to have games where you have four players but you only have a two player panel and the other two play on controllers, you can do something like that. Or just games that are better suited for controllers versus, you know, arcade controls. And also it'll give you access to light guns and whatever else you want to put in there. As far as your front audio, you have two pre-cut holes for four inch speakers and you provide the speakers yourself. I decided to go with these Kicker 300 watt speakers. They sound really good, especially paired with that eight inch subwoofer. It gives you a nice, full, deep, rich sound. The other thing I'll mention is it does have a bezel. So it comes with a plexiglass bezel that sits in front of your monitor. I would have liked to see some artwork on it, but you know what? It would be nearly impossible to accommodate a plethora of 32 inch monitors. So I know why they didn't do it. So it's something you could do yourself. You could mask it off and maybe just spray it black so you have a black border. I don't know, whatever you wanna do. Again, that's kind of what's cool about DIY. You can do it however you want. Of course, no arcade would be complete without a light up marquee. It looks great with even light distribution and a high quality graphic that's reverse printed on the Plexi. Oh, and you might see this little issue right here. The shadowing you're seeing is because of how I mounted this particular speaker. I put the wires in front, so it's my fault, but I decided to just fix it later. But just be aware for when you install yours. Commander Darius, we need you. So, probably wondering what can you play on this thing crisis. i don't know everything xeno crisis is on it one of my favorite games and actually it's a new game but that's the cool thing about this kit you can play modern games you can play retro games you can play whatever the hell you want on this thing so it's kind of like one of those things right like as much as i'm an arcade collector you gotta have a multi-cade in your collection at some point. And I have been absent of one for a long time, so it's kinda like, I don't know what I was thinking. I can't collect every game, right? So I have to have some alternative to play the games I can't play uh, if I don't have, you know, you know, all the funds to grab everything. And space, space is kinda still an issue. But anyways, I'm having a blast with this thing. I'm gonna show you a couple more games just to show you how versatile it is, but man, you don't have to buy Carlos's build. There's many other builds, but I gotta say, it's pretty awesome. Just let's break out to the menu real quick so I can show you. Hit the exit button. It has MAME, it has uh, Fightcade integration, it has Neo Geo, it has Capcom CPS1, CPS2, CPS3, Daphne, Techno Parrot. I mean, it, it goes on and on, Naomi. Triforce, Atomus Wave, American Laser Games. You can play gun games on it too. I'll go to gun games. We're gonna remove our little tray here. There's a little bit of setup involved in getting the gun games to work. So um, I'll, uh, I'll link the videos below. So if you decide to get this build, there is some setup you have to do. I feel like I play a lot of Area 51. I feel like I play that all the time. Let's pick a game that I don't play as often for a gun game. Let's see. Okay, we're gonna pick one of my favorite light gun games of all time, and I hardly ever play it, which is Operation Wolf. This is one where I actually would like to own the cabinet one day. But anyway, all right, let's let her rip and you can see how the light gun support works. And let's go. And uh, the force feedback works too. Let's go. Oh. 
I killed the nurses. <laughs> Shoot. Sorry, guys. All right, so you get the point. It's badass, right? And you can play all the gun games on it. It has Sindin support and support for Ultimark Aim Track. I was gonna talk to him about integrating gun for IR because that's my preferred light gun method, although the Sindin is great too. And the cool thing about it is this build absolutely supports Sindin and the Ultimark Aim Track. Okay, I know you guys are gonna wanna see the spinner working, so we're gonna do Tempest because that's a classic spinner game. And you'll see the spinner integrates nicely into the system. You know, that the classic, um, you know, Tempest where you kind of spin around and go crazy. But, uh, but yeah, so this works real good on here. Tempest is obviously a game that showcases the spinner. Another one would be Arkanoid. Let me show you Arkanoid real quick. It, uh, it's a little sensitive, you know? I, I was never actually that great at Arkanoid, but I remember playing this. This was like um, a game they had... At a, on a cocktail cabinet at this Chinese restaurant by my house. They'd always swap out the games, but they had this, and they had like Galaga or Galagala, as Kim calls it. It was always a game I kind of liked, but I wasn't that good at it. You got your spinner. Uh, now I'll show you the trackball real quick, because uh, you know I want to make sure you see all of the features of the cab. So let's go to the trackball real fast. Let's get uh, Centipede going. So. Obviously, Centipede is going to be a game where you use the trackball, and this works really great too. So I just wanted to show you, you know, like I said, there's a lot of versatility in this control panel. You can pretty much do whatever the heck you want with this. Oh, come on. Really? There we go. So, like I said, Lots of versatility in the control panel. And you also have that four-way stick too, so you can do games that require four-way joysticks. Okay, we're gonna put that four-way controller to the test with Burger Time. Now, I should be able to clear this board with a four-way stick. The eight-way, I can't do it. So I don't know if you've ever tried to play. Well, I can do it, but it's a lot harder. I don't know if you've ever tried to play Burger Time with an eight-way stick. Not a fun time. Uh, because what will happen is it can't it, it like registers these like false inputs and it doesn't know if you're going up or down So it's really cool that he included this On here, you know, because there's a lot of fun Four-way arcade games that without the proper stick. It's really not fun to play them. Oh shit I'm Not doing amazing, but ah oh, crap Come on, man, everyone on the internet is watching you right now. You gotta do this. I'm close, I'm close. Okay, these bastards are all over me right now. All right, they're going up that ladder like a bunch of idiots. Okay, hold on, I think I got this. The egg, oh, the egg is on me. All right, I decided I'm gonna play out with some Street Fighter 4, but I wanna give you some final thoughts on this thing. What do I think about it? I think they definitely did a great job continuing the Rec Room Masters legacy. And if you're looking for a multi cade DIY, it's definitely one you should consider. There's a lot of them out there, right? Game Room Solutions is another popular one, but I think you can't really go wrong with this. The control panel is great. I forgot to mention, it does have a coin door option. You can have a coin door or, a, or just like a, false door or whatever so you can gain access to things. I love the hidden control panel where you gain, gain access to a keyboard, controllers, other things like that. And the fact that they used an iPad controller in here, really, or encoder rather, will really expand your capabilities as to what you can support. You can really put anything in here, but definitely go check out Carlos's company, Arcade Dash One. They make great builds. They are hyper spin based and some people are moving on to like Batocera and other things. But uh, he does all the hard work for you. That's the one beef I have with Hyperspin. It's not really easy, but Carlos does a great job supporting it and continue to expand it uh, if you decide to go that way. But anyways, let's play some Street Fighter 2. Street Fighter 2. Street Fighter 4. And uh, we'll see how we fare here. All right, let's, let's go. I'm going to do a medium difficulty because I know you guys always give me crap in the past. Also, if you're interested in more information about the Arcade One system, I built a multi-cade called The Beast about, 
I don't know, maybe over three years ago now, and I used that build uh, in that. So you can take a look. I did more gameplay and showed you a little bit more about how it works. All right, let's see if I can do it. Medium's tough for me, man. You know, I'm 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 not the best at this, so we'll see. I should be good. All right, let's go. Hey. No, no, no! I don't guess I don't know how block works. Not that impressive, I know, but I'll take it. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope you're enjoying this content. We're taking a little break from the normal arcade stuff and doing some emulation, and it's been fun. I've had a great time with it. We have one more emulation video up before we call this whole emulation thing quits, but we're gonna do um, Gun for IR. I sent my guns to Raymond Dye over at RPEG Electronics, and he hooked me up with some pretty cool stuff. So I'm gonna show you that in the next video. Give me some feedback on this. Do you like this? I've covered other Rec Room Masters cabinets in the past, and it's just nice to see that Carlos is continuing the legacy and making some improvements along the way. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Put your comments below. If you consider subscribing to the channel if you enjoy this. And that's it for now. We will see you on the next one.